I know that we've been experiencing some really troubled times as a country, but this is what makes America and Americans incredible. We adapt, we survive, and then we thrive. Look, it's time to stop thinking the stock market is going to crash and accept the fact that there are some sectors that are going to carry the stock market higher despite a lot of the negative sentiment out there. It's just my opinion, but in this video, we're going to discuss the stocks that are at all-time highs and are poised to go even higher coming up. What's going on, everybody? My name is Brad, and this is Own the Chaos. The stock market is crazy, it's chaotic, and I believe that you can own it through this channel. The stock market continues to look bullish as of late after its pretty steep correction, and the S&P 500 was able to maintain above its support at $3,000. I've made a recent bold prediction that the S&P would reach $3,500 by the end of the year, and I still stand by that. Let me know what you think about that in the comments. But here's why. The people who are unemployed account for less than 5% of the entire country's income. Pretty crazy to think about, right? And while this number is staggering and we may be experiencing the largest transfer of wealth we have ever seen, we as investors have to take emotions out of it and play the hand we have been dealt. You see, this transfer of wealth means that there's still plenty of people out there with money and they're spending it. It's been no more evident than the surprising retail spending numbers we saw in May, right? RV companies like Airstream and Thor can barely keep up with demand as people are buying these super expensive money pits on wheels. And so this is why I chose five stocks that are at or near all-time highs, and I think they will continue to go higher. The first stock that I believe is still worth buying despite the price is Clorox. Ticker symbol CLX is currently trading at $218 a share, and I have every reason to believe that we'll see $250 very soon. Clorox reportedly increased disinfected product production by 40%, but still can't keep up with the unbelievable demand. And it's obvious, right? How many of you out there are using extra Clorox wipes on the counters, doors, and hell, everywhere anyone touches for that matter? The disinfectant side of Clorox, though, is the obvious answer, however. Many people either don't know or have forgotten that Clorox owns brands like Glad, which, if you're at home more, you're probably creating more trash at home. Companies like Kingsford, because you're probably grilling more, and sure, restaurants are starting to open, but they're barely open, and at most places, there's only outside seating at this point. We're looking at Pine Sol on the floors that you're walking on more often, and even Hidden Valley, the salad dressing company, because, well, you better be eating more salads after you've gotten the 19 am i right and no i'm not talking about disease i'm talking about that waistline guys in all seriousness this is a huge deal and will only continue to grow especially as we are supposed to be hearing soon about their expansion into the asian markets which would be insane for the company not only that but clorox also recently raised its quarterly dividend by five percent and its 2.14 percent yield is much higher than the s p's 1.9 percent average Who doesn't like a good dividend? Clorox stock is up 100% in the last five years, which is over 75% higher than the industry average. So for these reasons, Clorox is a no-brainer, in my opinion, to buy now and still continue to buy as I can't see a scenario where this provides many dip opportunities anytime soon. Stick it in your portfolio and watch it work on autopilot. Next up is William Sonoma. Ticker symbol WSM is currently trading at $87 a share and well above its pre-crash numbers. Now, I brought you William Sonoma back in early April as one of the most underrated stocks during that time. There's been tons of insider buying, and back then I explained that they have a great e-commerce platform, and demand will likely go through the roof as people are cooking more. Back then, the price was below $50 a share, and I have reason to believe that William Sonoma isn't done here. And my first reason as to why will involve taking a look at Kroger's latest earnings report. Yes, Kroger. The CEO, Rodney McMullen, stated during the earnings call that Kroger reported a 92% increase in digital sales during the quarter as many consumers chose to place orders online for delivery or pickup. To best satisfy the growth, Kroger hired 40,000 new employees to work on the digital side of the business, which for that reason, I'm a huge fan of Kroger too, in case you were wondering. Regardless of how consumers interact with Kroger, the company is seeing a new trend playing out as families are cooking together more often he said. Over time, this could transform into new habits that are here to stay for some time, and this, in my opinion, is the real kicker. Remember, I said this two months ago that remote work is here to stay, despite when new businesses open back up. 
we've seen a huge uptick in this trend. And if you're going to be working from home more often, you're probably going to be cooking from home more often, which is where WSM or Williams Sonoma comes into view here. I can easily see this hitting 125 before the end of the summer. And really, that's not much of a stretch in my opinion. Okay, real quick before we get on to the next stock here, I just want to invite you over to the Chaos Crew. If you click join next to subscribe, what you get is a watch list for me every single day of the week. An hour before the market opens, you get this watch list that gives you a pretty good snapshot of what's moving and what to watch out for throughout the day. Not only that, but you get some pretty cool badges as well to just signify that you're part of the Chaos Crew. And for $4.99 a month, I think it's an incredible value. So if you do as well, I would love to have you over there. Next up is CrowdStrike. Now, honestly, in the cybersecurity and cloud computing space, you could almost throw a dart at any one of these companies and make money. Stop fighting this remote work stuff, people. It's happening and it's just getting started. And that's why CrowdStrike has flown over $100 a share and has gone up $30 a share since bringing it to this channel a month ago. As more and more people are going to be working remotely, the demand for cybersecurity is going to skyrocket and investors are finally starting to see this. CrowdStrike's recent earnings were reported on June 2nd and total revenue was up an astounding 85% with core subscription revenue up 89%. Annual recurring revenue was up 88% and the company's subscription customer account was more than doubled up over 105%. CrowdStrike is generating some serious cash flow as well. Operating loss improved from $25.8 million a year ago, but operating cash flow has ridiculously increased to $98.6 million from just $1.6 million a year ago, and free cash flow increased to $87 million, up from a free cash flow cost of $16.1 million a year ago. These are some numbers that are just mind-blowing, and they aren't at all because of the Rona either. CrowdStrike was already on the rise before the crash, and this remote work trend has literally catapulted them in this space i do also like palo alto ticker symbol P P A N W, which has lagged CrowdStrike a bit, but still has plenty of upside, in my opinion, to eclipse its pre-crash highs. Next up, we have Etsy, and this was another really good e-commerce play that I spoke of just four weeks ago. Ticker symbol ETSY is currently trading at $91.50 and hit a new record all-time high at $92.08 as of this recording. Etsy operates online marketplaces for buyers and sellers. The company's expected earnings growth rate for the current year is about 38.2%, and I think they beat that still. $100 a share and beyond is coming, people, and here's why. Many folks who were laid off have turned to companies like Amazon, Shop, and yes, even Etsy to try and earn some income from home. If you've been laid off and can't even begin to look for a job because everything is closed, you're likely turning to e-commerce to try and at least make ends meet. And if you think I'm kidding, Etsy has nearly tripled virtual storefronts since the pandemic and has been the number one place to look for for face masks. People have been making them at home and then selling them on Etsy. I know that we've been experiencing some really troubled times as a country, but this is what makes America and Americans incredible. We adapt, we survive, and then we thrive. It's been truly something to see for sure. God bless America, people. And if you agree, hit that like button. My final point on Etsy here is this. With lockdowns that were in place, along with remote workers, people are spending more time at home as we have spoken about, which has increased demand for furniture, improving the work around the house, and DIY projects. This has boosted growth of the home decor market further, and this is where Etsy really shines as well. With online retail open during the lockdown, furniture and other home decor items have been available at discounted prices, making it more affordable for customers, and for those reasons, Etsy could very well see $150 a share by the end of the year. Okay, my fifth and final stock that has hit all-time highs and is still very much a buy is Peloton. This is one of my top tech stocks that I spoke about last month, and then it was under $30 a share. Now, ticker symbol PTON is trading as of this recording at $50.95 and recently hit an all-time high of $51.95 a share. Going along with this same theme of remote work and with gyms still pretty much closed, Peloton is surging and showing no signs of stopping anytime soon. In fact, they are still back ordered till who knows when because demand is so high. If you want a Peloton bike, you will be waiting as long as 
eight or nine weeks or more to get one. That is crazy. Sure, the Rona has exacerbated demand, but Peloton was doing quite well before the crash too. Peloton was giving consumers what they wanted, which was the desire for convenience when it comes to working out. There's a massive demographic of people out there that have every intention of getting and staying fit, but they just can't find the time. You know who you are. I mean, I'm in the same boat. It has become even more important to be able to exercise at home at the time of your choosing, particularly as the Rona has spread. The company has also mastered the customer experience. Average monthly workouts in third quarter were 17.7 compared to 13.9 in the prior year. Average monthly churn or attrition during that time was 0.46%. That is crazy. The company's lowest level in four years. Not only that, but the 12-month retention rate was 93%. And it seems to me that once a new member tries a Peloton device for the first time, he or she becomes hooked. And I already can hear people saying this. So save yourself. This is just a Bowflex fad comment because this ain't it. This is just the start of this revolution. In my opinion, gyms could actually end up becoming obsolete sooner than we thought as Peloton isn't just an exercise equipment company. Their recurring revenue is bigger than just selling the bikes and that's where Peloton wins in my opinion. Hell, we just recently saw 24-hour fitness file for bankruptcy. Who do you think will be the next big domino to fall? Let me know in the comments below on those thoughts as well as what you think about these five stocks. And if you would like to check out my top five stocks under $10, check out this video right here. Or if you missed this week's stock market showdown with the cruise liners, click this video here. Trust me, you are not going to be disappointed with that one. And as always, folks, thanks for watching. I will see you all before the bell. And B. Smith is out.